So I just recently watched EDH Deck Building's video about Monolith Commanders, and I can definitely agree with a lot of his points. As someone who's recently started building a lot more around the 99 instead of the actual commander, I definitely can agree with a lot of his struggles that he talks about when decks are built around the commander rather than the overall strategy itself. When you're too focused on the commander, a lot of problems can pop up where people make assumptions about the deck that you're about to play before they even play it and see it in action. If you pull up to the table with an Edgar Markov deck, I'm going to assume that it is going to be a powerhouse of a deck that will be a problem starting on turn one. But then let's say that Edgar's proxied and you maybe only spent like $100 on the deck, it has a bunch of tap lands in it, and you know, the average CMC is actually pretty high and you're going for a totally different strategy. I won't know that until I actually sit down and play the game. So sometimes monolith commanders can definitely be a big struggle. When you're playing a Jetmir deck, I'm going to wait to save all my interaction for when Jetmir hits the battlefield. When you're playing Azur the Enchanter deck, again, I'm going to keep all my interaction and all my removal for that commander. So this leaves problems for the entire table. The entire table has to play around the fact that you're going to play your commander at some point, and they have to keep their resources available to answer that said commander, where how am I going to play my commander and it actually stays on the battlefield. Everyone's saving their removal for my commander, so how am I able to protect that? This leads to a huge gray area with monolith commanders where some people don't care that much, some people play more casual pods, and so removal is not as prevalent, especially when people don't want to be rude. However, in casual pods where the removal is not as common, a lot of these commanders just kind of take over and are almost unstoppable. But in the super high power pods, they're almost unplayable because people have answers almost all the time for those commanders. So how do you play a monolith commander? That is the big question that we're answering today. Monolith commanders are supposed to strike fear into your opponents. They're supposed to be a big threat. They're supposed to be something that should not resolve or else the game's kind of over because the strategy is just that powerful. Powerful, and the commander is that powerful. So I wholeheartedly believe that if you really want a powerful monolith commander, you need to just run more protection. Yes, it's simple as that. Just run protection. Run a lot more protection and interaction than you think you might need. Depending on the monolith commander that you actually choose to run, the strategy is going to be powerful enough and the commander is going to be powerful enough where if you can just help the commander do its thing and run like an engine and you're properly protecting it, that's all that really needs to occur for the deck to run smoothly. Otherwise, if you're not running protection, a lot of times you'll probably need to have more ramp so that you can pay for that commander cost because your commander will be so powerful it will get removed it will get targeted you might get targeted early game before you play the commander you might get targeted and it might get countered as soon as you put the commander out there you can almost always count on people to have answers to your commander so you need to figure out what are the most common answers to your commander and how can I protect from that let's take a look at my Othari deck for an example Othari on its own is an incredibly powerful commander it has recursion it has evasion and flying it's going to keep me healthy with lifelink and it can attack as soon as it gets onto the board on top of that fact it gets me experience counters which are extremely hard to interact with and then based on those experience counters, I'm creating tokens that will get me further in my game plan of an aggro deck. This deck is mainly an extra combat strategy as well as some proliferation and doubling the triggers of my commander. However, I run only eight extra combat spells in this deck, two of them being creatures, Aurelia and Combat Celebrant. However, when you look at my protection package, I have 16 cards specifically designed to protect Othari from any danger. I have plenty of token payoffs, I have plenty of removal and interaction, I have plenty of ramp, but the thing I run the most of is protection. Giving Othari indestructible, phasing out all my creatures, giving Othari hexproof, or protection from a certain removal spell. All of these cards allow me to keep Othari on the battlefield as long as I possibly can. I could certainly take out four to eight protection spells and add more extra combats and add faster ramp and make the deck probably a little bit faster. However, the overall speed of the deck will actually decrease because of this. 
this because I will have to spend crucial turns either recurring Othari through its ability or having enough ramp and lands on the battlefield so that I can pay the commander tax that inevitably will come. But instead, I just run a ton of protection to keep Othari on the battlefield. If Othari dies, I maybe have one or two more recast of Othari before my strategy is basically done. So I need to keep Othari on the battlefield as much as possible. This is the way. I truly believe that this is how you run a monolith commander. The strategy through the commander will be successful enough as long as you can keep the commander on the battlefield. While you are technically slowing down your game plan by adding more protection into your deck instead of bombs, or instead of faster ramp, or any rituals that might make it faster, the protection actually just makes your deck run a lot more smoothly, which in turn makes the deck faster. It might sound a little bit weird, and it might not really make sense, but I promise you, your deck will be slower if you have to recast your commander three or four times, compared to maybe only once because you just don't have protection. My Othari deck has been extremely successful in the pods that I've played against, whether the pod is high power, middle power, or low power. Then again, I don't play my Othari deck in low power simply because it is a very, very strong deck and it is well tuned. But in those higher pods, I understand that there is removal. So I make sure when I'm mulliganing that I have protection in my opening hand. I have quite a few draw spells that allow me to try to draw into that protection and I won't really cast my commander until I know the table doesn't have answers or I know that I have enough protection for it. Sometimes, depending on the amount of open mana that I have, I let Othari die simply because I know that on the opponent's end step, I can then recur Othari. The only time I'm super Super concerned about Othari dying is when the card says exile, in which case I am forced to use a protection spell. Other than that, the inevitability of Othari and the inevitability of hopefully your monolith commander should be enough to get you over the hump with the protection spells that you have. Investing in more protection and interaction to keep your commander alive will always suit you better than adding more gas into your deck. And now the important question of what colors are best in something like a monolith commander honestly i think any color combination can possibly have a good monolith commander strategy with plenty of protection to it protection does not have to be a three mana white instant that says make all your creatures indestructible it does not need to necessarily be a counter spell it doesn't need to be a pyroblast it doesn't need to be that necessarily if you have reanimation if you have resilience of any kind to ever your commander is able to be on the battlefield field longer for whatever reason that can be protection but if i were to give a ranking of the colors from best protection to worst protection it would be white blue green black then red so to wrap everything up, monolith commanders are definitely a very difficult archetype to play. However, they seem to be the most popular. So the question is, how do you get these popular commanders to actually function and actually hold up to the standard that people think of them? I believe that is protection. Running protection is how you're going to get there. And running protection is going to allow your deck to run smooth enough so that the actual monolith side of the commander that makes it so powerful runs better. Thank you all so much for watching. The growth from just two videos has been absolutely insane. And I just want to take a second to really recognize everybody and thank you guys genuinely for the growth. I'm trying my best with this new venture. I'm trying to be real and authentic with the opinions that I post and how I like to enjoy Magic the Gathering. I love having discussion in the comments. There was over, I think, 150 comments on my last video about Rule Zero. And engagement like that is just amazing. I love being able to discuss the topic of the video in the comments. So, just like with that last video in Rule Zero, if you have any opinions on how you run your monolith commanders and how you approach a commander that has a reputation or that has a distinct strategy with it, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend, like the video, let me know in the comments how you think about it and of course subscribe to the channel thank you